Hello, welcome to tonight's Chaos Chat, and on the line we have the undefeated Chaos Champion of LVO. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself again? Hey guys, uh, TG Lanigan here to answer all of your burning questions. Ooh, burn it. Well, hopefully it's a good burning, not a bad one. Let's hope. <laughs> not a Nurgle style burning. There we go. <laughs> That'd be... That'd be terrible. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, so in our last episode, we, we kind of, uh, the last one with TJ anyway, we talked about his Magnus list where, where he was run around beating the hell out of some Marines, which was amazing. Um, it was kind of the only, only chaos thing on the block there for a while. And then, uh, yeah, he decided to kind of forego that and went a different route. So um, what did you end up taking to LVO? Took Possessed to uh, LVO. Um, so I have my own version of it with Playverse Crawlers. And... So I was doing really well for a while, so. <laughs> yeah, so you ended up uh, going undefeated, and then uh, you made it to the Shadow Round, and, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what happened there? <sighs> So I uh, ended up going 6-0, and which was great. Um, had some really good games. Uh, played the Brohammer, a variation of the Brohammer list, which was cool to see basically how it works. Um, and then uh, went to the Shadow Round, unfortunately. Uh, just uh, It was just really late, and I made a couple of um, mistakes uh, just due to the length, the length of time I had been playing. And, uh, yeah, ended up losing that round, but still a great, great event. No, you you did incredibly well. Um, you ended up with I know you were top demons and what was you had two awards, all right? Um, yeah, I mean it was um three full games, three full games. So I mean it was uh super uh super sweaty, I would say. Like it got really far. In the, you know, uh, in, in the games where you're just playing against super skilled players. And, like, when you go that that far and you're still undefeated in, a, in an event like that, you're going to play some really tough lists. So I actually played um, last round of the event, uh, round six, I actually played uh, Mark Perry, which was in the running for also top Chaos players. So it was really funny that in the finals I had to play basically Chaos versus Chaos. Only one of us makes it in. So... <laughs> I mean, I guess that's kind of a, akin to the um, Sean playing against Jeff Poole in the semifinals. So, yep. So it was uh, it was a pretty crazy game because he runs a possessed list too. He was running a possessed list as well, but he was running um, double obliterators. So to kind of play around a list where I have almost no shooting, but he has a lot, was really cool. No, that's cool. I, I like that, and I, I like Mark's style because he he's definitely an out of the box thinker too. So. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's got a ton of great lists. We definitely collaborate um, anytime we can. We have different play styles, so the list always comes out different, no matter what. It's just like, like before I went to LVO, we, we looked at each other's lists, and he was like, I think you should take this, this, and this. And I was like, I respect your opinions on these models. However, I just don't play it like you play, so I'm just not going to take stuff that like is not going to be conduct, uh, you know, productive to my type of play style. And, uh, yeah, um, he took things that I was like, those are really good, but I would never have them on my list just because I, we don't play like that. And then when we played against each other, we were just talking about it, and he was like, yeah, dude, like me and you, we're never going to come up with a list that's going to be the same. It's just not going to happen unless it's like just so powerful that there's no denying it just because of how different our play styles are. So, No, it's true, and, and uh, that's what I love about collaboration is like you can get ideas from somebody, and you might not necessarily agree with the, the route they took to get there, but uh doesn't mean necessarily that they have bad ideas. Oh, yeah, no, he's he's great, man. He's a fantastic player. We actually played – we met the first time at Nova. We had to play then as well before we got bracketed, so that was a really cool game. Uh, ended up pulling out that one as well, but that was also a super close game. This one was by one point. It was a 25-24 game. So man, That's crazy. That is crazy close. And we so had a you... whole crowd and everything, man. It was uh, it was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and I love Mark, too, because I've had him on the channel, and he's he's a lot of fun. Uh, I look forward yep, to getting him. Yeah, he's great, man. Yeah, I got to get him back. So, And you ended up uh, top demons, and did you get two awards, or was it just that one? 
I got top chaos and top demons. Damn. So. Two for. <laughs> So, no, that's amazing, and, and I love the fact that you were able to go there and show that, you know, Chaos still has some bite. Sucks that you didn't end up in the, the top. I was rooting for you, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people were at that point. It was close, man. I mean, the last um, – so we had some unfortunate, like, um, some stuff happen, like terrain and stuff like that. Some models got moved, and I'm not uh, somebody who uh, – really gets upset about stuff i'm pretty laid back when i play so i just let it happen and then i was like okay well i need like a big i was like i need a big turn uh then we roll badly <laughs> oh the dice beat you sad day it was like um i needed to kill like two po like i needed to kill a drop pod a chaplain a chaplain dread um, drop pod, chaplain dread, two of the admech mortar vehicles, um, as well. Um, so that was a thing. Wow. That, um, that's a lot. All in one turn. It was a <laughs> lot. The drop pod had two wounds left to it, so that should have happened. I literally failed three charges with three different characters. I rolled, it was like a four inch charge. Oh, it was like a five inch charge. I think I rolled a four a four, a three. And I was like, well then, okay. Uh, and then uh, the possessed can definitely do it. Like if there was two possessed left, they can definitely do it if they roll high. Um, and then they rolled like one attack each. And I was like, okay, uh, that's bad too. So uh, it was just like a series of unfortunate events. Then that happened. The dread died. Uh, one vehicle took six wounds for smites, but then all my other spells failed. So I did like, Six wounds with two smites, and then I failed the rest of my targeting spells, which was just really unfortunate. So I was like, okay, well, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I just, uh, yeah, I couldn't um, couldn't kill one vehicle with basically, or bring it down far enough with targeted smites that I, I was fine. So, Oh, man. Was, uh... Well, that's super unfortunate. But, hey, man, 6-0 is oh, still, still not bad, so... Uh, yeah, we're going we're going strong this year. I want to retain my title, so we'll be going with some spicy chaos list this year. I'm very excited. Ooh, so Ooh. spicy. So spicy. And so to talk about the spice. So um before we get into what you're kind of testing now, I'd really like your thoughts because uh I'm talking a lot to a lot of people about Grey Knights, and I think a lot of people are really downplaying what their effect on the meta is going to be. A lot of people are like, well, you know, Marines beat them, so I don't have to worry about them. But uh, we don't know what's going to happen to Marines. We don't know what else is going to come out. I mean, we just saw what Tau and Admech or Astro Militarum got, which are – Astro Militarum, I think, got some good stuff. So. Uh, Astro Militarum got some, some okay things. The problem with Astro Militarum is they're still um, – they still run into the same issues they ran into before. Because they didn't get any durability options, they got better shooting. So, like, the problem with them right now is, like, Space Marines just outlast them. Uh, I'm talking Iron Hand specifically, so yeah. Space Marines just outlast them in damage. And, like, your six last cannons that you're firing every turn with Chaplain Dreads, or if you're running the Leviathan Dread list, the Levi Dread just doesn't die, and then it just walks across everything. So, like, those are two big issues that Guard did not get any kind of way to fix those issues. They got more firepower, so they'll do really well against lists that are not Space Marines. <laughs> but against Space Marines, they're going to have a lot of problems. Yeah. And then against Guard... Sorry, against Grey Knights, Guard are really going to struggle as well because Grey Knights are insane. Uh, people who don't think that they're powerful are just not looking at the right stuff. I, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, you have a unit that can basically ignore negative modifiers and ignore a line of sight and fire in a completely different phase. That's super strong. Um, I mean, uh, then you can power up your smites to do extra damage. That's super strong, too. I mean, there's just so much you can do with the list. Right. They're super tactically flexible. And uh, to kind of elaborate on what he was he was talking about is that you could take like a unit of paladins or a, unit, a strike squad or purgation squad or really whatever. Um, you can toss astral aim on them, which is a spell that allows them to shoot out of line of sight. 
And then they also have another spell that allows them to shoot in the psychic phase. So stuff like uh, concealment don't work because it's not the shooting right. phase. <laughs> they literally blow. Like people have been asking me, they're like, "Well, like, I don't know, man. I think like I I, I think um, you know, I think you're uh." I think my possess will be fine. I'm like, I, I, you literally, if you think that, you literally don't understand the mechanic. So I need to explain the mechanic. <laughs> like, you don't get to conceal, and you just get shot and killed. Right. And then even if, uh, especially if you go second, you know, I've been talking to people that are like, well, I'll zone them out. And I'm like, well, they can still, you know, teleport around the board. If you zone them yep. out, then they're just going to zone you out, and then they're going to still blow you up. Right, I mean, like, if you're going to, like, if your mentality is like, because I originally was thinking the same thing when I started. I was like, well, you know, you get the particular matchup, like, uh, long ways. You just sit at the back of the table, deploy all your Nurglings out, and then on turn one, you just build some beasts. You put all three tanks up as there as well, and they'll kind of screen out your possessed. That sounds great. That's a perfectly sound theory on turn one, even on turn two. But at some point, you need to go grab those objectives, and your possessed can literally never be within 24 inches of the pal of these paladins. So, if every turn you're just summoning units, and I'm the only one that plays summoning, like I'm the only list that like the possessed bomb that is running summoning. Other possessed lists they don't even run summoning, so I literally don't know how they're going to screen out. I'm also running, which is again one of the only people who's running this, uh, the the tanks. No one else is running those plague crawlers with their possessed. So again, I don't know how you're going to screen against Grey Knights, because they literally kill whatever they touch with Bolter Fire. Yeah. So, but even if all that works, and you literally just sit there, you move it, you know, you summon a unit, you move up, you summon a unit, move up. Eventually, they're going to push on you at some turn during the game, and you're just not going to be able to cover it, because you don't have any way of... Um, you have no way of dealing with it. Once they shoot you... They kill like fourteen of your possessed immediately. Uh, so, yeah, and that's not even account for all the all the smites. Um, what are you seeing? I know that you've been playtesting, and I'm sure you're playtesting some pretty high profile people. Uh, like how many smites on a general good Grey Knights list are you expecting? Um, you're looking at about eight. I think for most of the characters, because you're going to take at least, um, you're taking your least your battalion. Um, uh, so, I'm sorry, you're looking at three characters, um, at least, right? You're taking your, you know, Drago and his buddies. Yeah, the brother um, captain and... <laughs> yep, you got to get a stern captain, so you smite a 24. So that's definitely a thing you're taking. Um, and then you probably take um, Drago, that's your second one, and then just some other guy, right? Doesn't matter what he is. Um, so that's your, that's six damage right there. They're all plus one to cast. Yep. So they're, they're definitely going off because they don't go up when you cast them. And then, uh, yeah, that's three guys. Then you, the Paladin Squad smites, that's another two damage. So that brings it up to 10. And then you've got like three squites, strike squads as well. If you're taking 10 mans, you split them into five at the beginning of the game. So that gives you another two. Uh, at least times that by six, it gives you another 12. So I'd say 20 is like the top range because one of those guys is going to get a D6 might. And then the bottom range is probably about 15 to 16. Oy. So 16 mortal wounds on an army that that's not even their, their, their normal like intent is very difficult to handle because you're literally – not expecting them to do that smite, you're expecting them to do other things, right? And then, so, and then you're not accounting for the bolter fire and the the sustained right. damage output is actually incredibly high. Um, in my local meta, you know, uh, a list that just took second at a RTT here, uh, he had 21 sources of smite if he did a combat squad on his strikes, and I was yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> that's that's not a bad note. I mean, like. The prevailing meta that I've seen so far is one unit of paladins, at least. So that's a that's a good chunk of your points. Then you've got some like apothecary, uh, not yeah, you got an apothecary to basically bring models back from the dead. And then uh, you're definitely taking Drago. He's he's a monster. Yeah. He's literally a monster. <laughs> he's he's so, like a super demon prince. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, he's he's insane. <laughs> so 
now that we've seen TJ's thoughts, which now mimic mine, so all you guys out there arguing with me that Grey Knights aren't that good, you heard it from the man, so <laughs> we're done with that. Um, so, to combat that, what sort of things are you starting to look at as far as tweaking your list and evolving? Well, I mean, um, if you haven't heard it already, like, in my voice or what our conversations we're having, like, they're dead. The possessed <laughs> list is just not a thing anymore. You're just not taking that anymore. Yeah, so, I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> they just do too much damage. Okay. Um, like, damage that you literally can't ignore. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's unfortunate. Um, but, uh, that's okay, you know, we'll, we'll get some other stuff, and, uh, I'm looking, you need to look into hordes, you need to look into be able to, to stand there and not get, like, melted off the table. Um, so I'm looking into some different builds that require, that basically, you just kind of stand there and hold the board, so, um... <laughs> Well, that's so a some horde builds. That's a completely different way to play. Uh, so horde builds. So one that we were talking about off off uh, before we came on, um, poxwalkers. So kind of run it, run me through like your thought process with poxwalkers. So me and um, Josh Death at the beginning of this um, edition. That was a list that we were uh, we ran. Um, I ran mine with fire raptors. He ran his with more. Um, so I ran mine with cultists and fire raptors. He ran his with pink horrors and pox walkers, basically, um, really pushing it to the limit with the, with the trick, um, back then, uh, cause back then you didn't pay for summoning points. Um, at the end, the tail end of basically right before they nerfed it, um, I, uh, was playing with some spawning and stuff, um, uh, I was playing some 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 uh, some chaos tricks like Fabi's Bile to basically bump up the Poxwalkers. So like Poxwalkers with like three attacks apiece are pretty powerful, or Poxwalkers that are like plus um, plus two strength and then plus two to wound are super powerful as well. Um, now, or my favorite, which is the toughness. When your poxwalkers go up three toughness and then become toughness six poxwalkers with a five up feel no pain and minus one to hit, that's pretty difficult for a lot of lists to overcome. And that was back then. Um, now it's a little it's a little easier. I mean, like lists definitely have more firepower, but um, it's still super strong where it is. Okay. So, um, so that's kind of the the general gist of the list. Now you know they changed to make it not broken. Um, <laughs> they changed where you have to actually have the summoning points, which is completely the reinforcing points, which is completely fine. Um, not, it's not an issue. Okay. So uh, that's kind of what we're messing around with right now. So are you building around like one core unit of 20 poxes or multiple uh, units? You want at least two. You definitely never want one on the table because if you don't go first, and they have a way to shoot you off the table, like night spinners or something like that. If you lose the unit, you won't lose the game, but like that's the trick. So then you're like, well, okay. So having 40 walkers on the table, two units makes it much more difficult. Um, I have a smaller unit as well, like a 10 man. So they can definitely do it too. They just start 10 lower, which is not a huge deal. But pulling casualties can be a little annoying because you have to pull within six inches to make the trick work. So you have to basically kind of really spread those guys out and make sure that you're going to have space for a ton of extra models. Yeah, and so are you doing the horror splitting with the Poxwalkers, or are you using an alternate method? I am using the pink horrors. Um, they are just the best... Four up in bowl gives you your best troops. Uh, cultists, I think, just are too volatile. And, like, the shooting was good, okay before because you could really bump it up. You get some prescience. You know, you could fire uh, twice because you could make them slanesh. Like, there's a whole bunch of cool tricks you could do. That's all gone now <laughs> because space marines don't care about strength three weaponry, and then you have to vet them, which is bad. Like, you have to do so much stuff to make them work that you're just not getting the utility out of the list. So, 
Okay. Um, so pinks are definitely the way to go. Plus, like, pinks, the great part about pinks over cultists is that you can make that unit basically as big as you want, which is really cool. Like, you can really spread out and grab objectives. You also don't give up kill points very easily um, because it's one unit as opposed to, like, 40 mans that just die and then they're dead. That's that's basically what happens with them. So um, I like that a lot better as well. No, that's all. Those are all great points. And so, how many points would you recommend in your list? What what? How many summoning points are you messing with to do this? Um, what's the current list have? I think it's around three hundred. Okay, that's not too bad. I thought it was gonna be like higher. <laughs> uh, it's four hundred. Sorry. Oh, okay. There we go. That's high. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. It looks like right now it's fifteen ninety four. So 1594 gets you, you know, 400. And then the real breakdown that you're looking at, right, is, so you got your 400 points, and then you're going to divide by five. That gives you 80 models that you can go and, and basically split amongst the two squads. So if we're looking to split, you're looking at about, um, you could make up to 100-man unit of box walkers. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine trying to do So are you doing the Fabius Bile thing too, or are you just doing Typhus? Unfortunately, he doesn't fit in the list properly because you need the Death Guard. Uh, so you need, in my list, you need Thousand Suns. You need it to be pure, so you can't waste that detachment. Then your second detachment is your Demon Detachment, which he doesn't fit in the Demon Detachment anyway. And then the third detachment, you need a pure Death Guard detachment as well so he doesn't fit in that one either the old one he fit in because chaos well first before this they didn't have the chaos um restrictions and then the other reason he would have fit in the old list is because the old list had a chaos space marine detachment so but he doesn't fit in it anymore oh i see because even if you inserted him in even though he doesn't break legions it would be a heretic astartes instead of a death guard gotcha yeah, he doesn't give you strategies. Okay. So he doesn't break. He doesn't break. Um, that's from my understanding. Uh, this is, and again, it's kind of like these rules are written for him and the way he works for shadowy allies very poorly. <laughs> so like the way it reads does not a hundred percent tell you like one way or the other. Like okay, well this one is like, um, you know. It just says that you can put him in a detachment and he doesn't break the detachment. But what does that mean? Does that mean he doesn't give Legion traits? Which is what I think it means. But then he doesn't give you stratagems. So, like, you need the stratagems. You can't, literally cannot play the list without a stratagem. So, it's unfortunate, but uh, I think he just comes out of the list. No, that's... Right now, he's not in the list. That's really super cool. So, you're just kind of messing with variants of this list to kind of finalize and see where you want to be. So we're going to get some new stuff next month. It's guaranteed we'll get something next month. Um, what that's going to be, whether or not it's the Admech one they showed us or the Death Guard one they showed us, uh, or whether or not the Death Guard are going to be in Saga of the Beast or not, we'll get something next month. Um, and uh, I'm kind of just um, waiting for that at this point. Unfortunately, um, the way that Chaos... With the with gray knights, just kind of like people that don't think that it's a it's an issue, like because oh my local doesn't run it. Just to put it into perspective for everyone who's thinking that it might not be an issue because your local currently doesn't run it, they are one of the cheapest armies to buy because they only need it's a space marine army, but you don't need any vehicles, so you're just running infantry. That's the first thing. The second thing is they are literally sold out. <coughs> On Games Workshop. <laughs> yeah, I saw that meme today that uh, yeah. <laughs> like 70% so of people like, went and bought them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody bought them. They are that powerful. Um, Siegler, uh, Richard Siegler, uh, no stranger to competitive play. He was originally running it up until um, the new Tau, because the new Tau was very powerful um, as well. Um, 
which is also going to be an issue for the possessed bomb, which is no longer a thing, I, I believe, because uh, Farsight Enclave lets you take six commanders. I know, I saw. Is that including Farsight, too? Like, is he a seventh one, or is he one of the six? Uh, he is not included. So, six and him. Dear God. <laughs> so, I mean, like, you're taking the missile launchers. Those are D3 damage. Um, and then... They basically ignore your modifiers. Uh, yeah. So they're like plus two to hit, so they're minus one to hit. Yeah. And, and, then, and then you have the cold stars that can just move 40 inches and be like right there and shoot your possessed anyway. They also count as being, if they drop it within 12, which you can only do that trick one time, with uh, blocking them from the 12, um, with the Alpha Legion. Yeah. If you do... If you do the trick, that means five of them drop in right on top of you. So if that is the case, you get no... Um, uh, the rest of them count as automatically having a marker light. So they automatically start with one marker light, which means they reroll ones. So they're hitting on threes, rerolling ones with all of their shots. So it's a lot. <laughs> it's a ton of damage. So... Um, uh, on Thankfully, we're not like I've been telling people. I did my um, I uh, work um, one of my you know one of the uh, businesses we have going on right now is you know Art of War. We do a whole bunch of coachings and stuff like that in my clinics that I do for everybody every week. You know, I told people like, listen, the Zest Bomb is still competitive. It's just not the top competitive anymore if you're running chaos. Like, it's just you're not you're gonna you're gonna come across a matchup you're not gonna be able to do anything about. It. It's just how it, just how it is, um, you know. If you're okay with that, then you know you'll be fine. But um, we're not like um, I'm not like Triple Order Skulls bad because they they're you now just they're in the worst spot I've ever seen now because like they were bad before, but. Um, now Tau can just blow them off the table. Now, um, you know, your Grey Knights smite one off the table and then basically shoot the other one off the table. They kill two on, like, one turn. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy, um, especially the Paladins. Because, like, not only do they can they shoot behind a wall and they're, you know, high toughness and they have two wounds each and they're apothecary so they get a feel no pain and, like, um, they ignore your modifiers. They also fight when they die. So even if you were thinking about still running the possessed into a granite list, and you char you got that charge off, they would just fight when they die and then murder the unit anyway. So like you're trading paladins for possessed, but then they still have the rest of their list left, and you don't <laughs> have the rest left. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's definitely a pickle, and uh, I think it's a pickle that. You guys will definitely conquer. You 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 have come up with lists uh, in the darkest of times, and people have mimicked you. And um, me myself, I mean, I played your Magnus list. So. <laughs> but uh, uh, that list is so cool. I love that list. It's a, Magnus is one of my favorite prime. You know, my favorite prime mark, him and Fulgrim. But they don't make a Fulgrim model, so we'll just keep playing Magnus. Um, and uh, like the list is super awesome. I just wish he was just a little, um, a little better. Um, I was just talking about this again on my clinics, but it was like, you, he made all the cults. Like Magnus made those cults, and yet he's not involved in any of them. He gets none of the buffs. Like what? That doesn't even make any sense. So <laughs> that was really frustrating. Like even if you would have said he can pick a cult, it doesn't matter what the cult is. He just gets it. That would have been fine. I would have been completely okay with that. Yeah. But him getting no cults at all, very frustrating. Very upsetting. And then no stratagems in the book for him at all. Uh, it was probably one of the most disappointing um, Psychic Awakening um, books that I've seen so far. We just didn't get anything. No, that was I... Actually yeah, that, that was kind of my point, is that they literally just doubled down on the Supreme Command. I mean, uh, some people over in the UK are actually making a lot of use of the Rubric Marine Bombs and the uh, Scarab Occult Bombs, um, that I, which I didn't realize Scarab Occult Terminators could get a 2-up and Vulnerable Save, which I think is pretty cool. 
Except yeah, that- against damage one. So um, there may be in other countries that works, but in you know the United States, like Starker bolt rifles are the thing. So you're not going to get your two up and vulnerable against them. Um, and then like they just blow everything off the table. Like it's just so much firepower. Like if we're just talking, like if you're just going to go to your event and you're going to play the normal, like what is now the Siegler list, um, they're just going to shoot you with like 40 Starker bolt rifles, 20 roof Marines, even with a three up, you're losing like, and with just that firepower, you'll probably lose with all the rerolls and everything like that. You'll probably lose like seven or eight of them. Um, with seven or eight of them dying, even with the spell, if you bring four back, you're still not getting enough where it matters. No. So that's no. kind of unfortunate. Because like your spell is going to get you D3 back if you do it correctly because you're going to take that one, right? So you get D3 back, and then if you do the other cult on the sorcerer that's in that one and that gives you an additional guy back you'll get four guys is the most you'll ever get back so but if they just killed six and you brought back four you're still losing two and like they'll just sit at range and you'll have to move up which means you don't get to fire twice like it's just not what's actually going to happen so it's very interesting to see that i think Honestly, it's one of those things when a lot of these books come out um, that people just don't understand how the mechanics work, and it catches a lot of people off guard. But once people understand what you're doing, then it becomes a problem. That's what I think a lot of these lists were. It was the same thing with the Disco Lords. Disco Lords came out. Nobody knew what they did. They ran rampant for, like, two smaller GTs. And then after that, everyone's like, I know what they do now, so they're not going to do well against players in the least that know what's going on no, and then they didn't yeah you're right no knowledge is power 100 percent. and i i was about to say you know gray knights also kind of counter the uh the two up and vulnerable save because it's like mortal wounds i don't care so yeah i mean like people were like well like um I, I, that was probably the most asked question over the week uh over the clinic was like what if i just run cultists and i run um you know uh t-suns like rubric marines in like in front of them instead i'm like well first things first like you said they ignore conceal and then second thing second like they don't do they do four damage against demons but they do two damage against everything else so two damage 10 smites 20 more wounds they don't really fail they're plus one to cast it doesn't go up you're not really gonna even if you stop one it's still going to kill, like, a, a unit of room of greens, you still lose 18 guys. And then we come into the same problem that, uh, was, uh, uh, we come into the same problem that Chaos has often, which is CP usage. That whole strat of stuff that we just said, you know, them shooting twice, teleporting across the table, you're going to use the strat to give them plus one in ball, all that stuff, that's expensive. And then you're going to auto-pass morale, that's expensive. Then let's say you, when you shot, you wanted to vet them, that's another point too. So you're spending, like, six points on this unit, and um, if you're fighting Grey Knights, they killed a unit of strike squads because none of the stuff's on the table yet. Um, you know, the, the, the paladins will just calm down off the table. They're not going to start on the table. So, um, yeah. And then the rest of the army is just sitting back there going like, hey, uh, you just spent 6 CP. Uh, what what are we doing? And you're like, nothing. <laughs> you're not doing anything. Your job is to do nothing. Die. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's, that's a problem, you know? So, um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of thousand sons. Unfortunately, I love them in the lore. They're great, but uh, new stuff is just very disappointing. Um, I don't know why, but it is, uh, but I'm excited about the future. I'm also excited about some, you know, some ninth edition grumblings and stuff like that. I'd really like to see some uh, some changes and stuff like that. I think um, Space Marines uh, in general, I think, just broke um, broke the broke the. Uh, they rung a bell that can't be unrung. I don't think that there's any kind of FAQs or anything like that that's going to be able to fix them down to a level that is going to be manageable. And I don't honestly think they want them to be down at that level. I think they want Space Marines to be good because Space Marines sell models. 
and everyone has a Space Marine army. Yeah, I mean they they sold out of like everything when they did these new supplements. So and they're still selling out. I mean Thunderfire cannons are just flying off the shelf. So. Yep. So, but um, yeah. So we're gonna try some horde stuff, and I, I, I'm very excited about um, how the list is going to do. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility when you have that many um, not points on the table. You know, you're playing with 400 points, and like, yes, you can split. Yes, you can bring Fox Walkers, but maybe you don't need Fox Walkers. Um, maybe you don't need to split. Maybe you need to summon in, like, six Flamers that just kill a unit of Orcs because 66 that are plus one to wounds from Flickering Flames and then plus one Strength wound everything on twos. That's probably going to hurt. That's probably going to hurt an Orc player. That probably kills most of the unit right there. That is true. I love yeah. some flamers. <laughs> so they're great. Um, you know, you could summon in a demon prince that has some because uh, you need you know maybe catch a flyer out of the sky and you don't want to send one of the good ones off into the distance to go take care of it. So you can summon in a demon prince. That's cool too. Being able to summon in uh, different like Nurgle heralds and things like that to give you additional spells that you didn't have before. That's super powerful too. Um, and uh, we're running Cult of Magic, so we're doing uh, up to 30 Mortal Wounds a turn. I think it's the max spread. Wow. Well, the max spread's much higher than that, but that's the high average max spread. Are you, I mean... Are you running the... Because uh, obviously you're doing the Devastating Sorcery and stuff. Are you doing that on a Terminator Sorcerer or like a Demon Prince? Uh, Demon Prince. Demon Prince. Oh, Okay. So I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket with one sorcerer that's like plus three to cast or something like that. I honestly think it is more powerful to just have an entire detachment that's plus one to cast. I think that's stronger. You just get more utility, more of your spells go off, and then, um, yeah, you don't have to worry about one character dying and basically, like, costing you the game. So. No, 100% true. <laughs> Um, so I have, um, like that, like I said, that's like the average max spread. No, that's awesome. And I'm looking forward to it cause I'm actually going to be running one here soon. So, <laughs> but, uh, no, this has uh, been a great chat. I know that. So sorry guys. He he's, I think driving, <laughs> um, he's actually, uh, going on some, something this weekend he had said so i know he's been di a little di distracted and it's not his fault i i was the one that bugged him to get on the channel so <laughs> yeah i apologize uh i you know been a lot of stuff to talk about so um you know things have been uh things have been busy you know we're all gearing up for the new season trying to get everything prepped and ready to go so uh you know i'm free to answer any questions that anybody you know wants to message me and talk to me about that's what i'm here for i'm here to you know make sure the community is thriving you know so and all great things so uh do you have anything to plug before we close up for the night so uh you know i've got my sponsors and like i said i already um talked about my our business you know me and nick uh and a couple other people have started you know, Art of War, like I said, we do coaching, we do list building advice, uh, we do articles and stuff like that. We want to get everybody uh, better playing more competitively, you know, learning all the skills and the tricks. Uh, Creature Caster, uh, one of my best sponsors. Uh, I still use all of their, you know, their miniatures. Um, you know, they've got some great heralds. They've got some fantastic demon princes. Uh, it's just some of my favorite miniatures, you know. Um uh, also sponsored by uh, 13th Legion. I get a lot of my miniatures and stuff from there, so they've definitely helped me out a lot um, to make sure that I'm able to pick stuff up when the meta changes. So, And uh, I think that's it. <laughs> well, thank you once again for being on the channel, and I hope that you have a good travels. So we'll get off here so that way you can pay attention to the road. All right. Thanks, James. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next Chaos Chat.